Isaiah 63. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Lord, thank you for these verses. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you would help us, Lord, and you'd bless these, uh, these thoughts, Lord. In this next little bit, Lord, we pray you'd help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, this, this chapter opens up, this whole section of Isaiah, uh, chapter 61, 62, 63, 64, there's really some amazing passages in there. And um, the prophet Isaiah asks, who is this? And there's sort of a conversation that's going back and forth in these opening verses. This person was striking in his, appear, in his appearance. He says, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra, this that is glorious in his apparel? And of course, you know, we know, you guys know, we really, uh, it's, there's really no guesswork who this is. Uh, it is Jesus Christ, but it is the glorified Jesus Christ. Um, and the context of these verses is future. Of course, this is the prophet Isaiah. And, um, uh, you know, there's um, the, these guys in the prophets, they, they said a lot of things that pertain to Israel immediately, but they said a lot of things that were for uh, our day and time. And the context here is his second coming. Um, some of the phrases in these verses refer to Armageddon and the judgment of the nations. And um, you know that from verses 2, 3, and 4. Um, verse 2, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? You know, they, you, you guys have probably seen pictures. Um, you know, back in that day, they would um, harvest the grapes, and um, and I think usually it was a it was a big big thing that whole grape harvest, big celebration, big joyful time, and they would put those grapes in a in what they called a wine fat, and then they would uh, several people would get in that thing, and they would literally, you know, do this to the grapes, and um, and these obviously are the grapes that throw off that red color. And um, so he says, Isaiah says, your garments, he said, it's, um, he says, why is your, why is your garment red? He said it, but it doesn't look like, you know, you bought it at the store red. It looks like it's been splashed red. Verse three, the Lord says, I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So bear in mind that picture of the wine fat and the trampling and, and the Lord's the Lord then compares it to blood. Go to uh, keep your place there, but look at Revelation 14. Uh, the Lord often uses that illustration of the wine and the wine press um, as a picture of his wrath. And uh, so look at, um, look at verse 6 of Revelation 14. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear, not, um, fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour 
of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Come down to verse 14. It says, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat likened to the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. How many of you young people know what a sickle is? Oh, wow. Okay. No explanation necessary. Thrust in thy sickle. Um, Okay. Verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden. Okay, just like that wine fat illustration. The winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. So, you know... um, in, in that valley, and, and you guys have you heard this, this isn't anything new to most of you, but on that day, the blood will be horse bridle deep. It's unbelievable. Look at chapter 19 of Revelation, Revelation 19. Revelation 19, verse 11, real familiar verses. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Go back to Isaiah 63. Keep your place there Isaiah, in Isaiah 63. But he says in verse 4, For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. The day, the day. Um, you know, that's a real definite day. Um you know, there's a lot of days in the Bible, and um, you will find, um, for example, when Israel went out of Egypt, it says 430 years passed, and it says on the self same day they made their departure out of Egypt. Um, man, the Lord is um, um, very definite. Uh, you know, the Lord said about his return that no man knoweth the day or the hour. Not even the Son, but the Father only. There is 
a day. And you know, God knows what he is doing, and there is nothing random about his timing. And he is very gracious with his timing. But he says here in Isaiah 63 that the day of vengeance was in his heart. Go to Hebrews chapter 4 for a moment. Hebrews 4. The day, the day of vengeance is in my heart. When you look at our world, you know, and, and it's just it's just craziness off the chart, you know, and, and, and that's it's n- it's nothing new. But it, it is, uh, you know, evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse. Um, you know, we we. In the last several months, you know, um, ever since October 7th, that that's been a, a real um, a big thing in a lot of our minds, and, and it's really been a big thing for a lot of people overseas. And um, many of you saw pictures and footage of the stuff that occurred there. You know, it, it goes beyond even what they did uh, to Israel. Um, not long after that, I saw film footage of what they do to their own people. It's unbelievable. Uh, there was a uh, an apartment building. Uh, it was, you know, I don't know, ten stories high, and um, they had uh, they were up about four stories. And so, if this, and they had a, they had like an open doorway window sort of thing. And um, so here's you're you're at the fourth fourth story. Down below, they had taken a big excavator and dug a massive hole in the ground. And it was hot weather. You know, I get the impression it's warmer there most of the time. And um, they started marching people up to this window, Um, you know, just for all sorts of things and reasons and people that weren't just what they wanted them to be. And they'd march the first one up and he's blindfolded and and they, they got a guy over here. He's about 20 yards away and just boom, pops him off and down in the hole he goes. Next. Boom! Down in the Holy Ghost. I mean, there must have been there must have been a hundred people that day. They just marched them. You know, if they, if they didn't like it, they just marched through the wind, just shot you, and in the hole you went. Um, you know, in in the last year, there's been a lot of um, films that have come out about child trafficking, you know, and and human trafficking. And that's really gotten to be, um, it's nothing new, but it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, our Lord even refers to that in, at the end of Revelation, that people that traffic in the souls of men. And, um, and so that's sort of a characteristic of our age, you know, and you're, you're always being cautious about the kids and you need to be and all that stuff. You know what the Lord's been doing for 6,000 years? He's just been watching all this. And um, you know what's in his heart? The day of vengeance is in his heart. He's like, you know, I have been gracious and I have watched all this stuff. And he's waited and he's been kind and he's been gracious and he's waited and he's waited. But he's got a day on his calendar and he's going I'm looking forward to that day. Three times in Hebrews chapter 3, there is a phrase that appears. Look at Hebrews 3 verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice. He repeats that phrase in verse 13, he repeats it again in verse 15. But in chapter 4, it shows up in verse 7. And I want you to see what he says in Hebrews 4, verse 7. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, 
Harden not your heart. I just, just found it interesting, the wording. It says, he limiteth a certain day. A certain day. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Man, the Lord has um, the Lord has a lot of days that he talks about, and some of them are really good, and some of them are, um, um, you know, they're days of opportunity for us. Um, but in Isaiah 63, there is another day in his heart. He has waited long as in the days of Noah. Uh, he's waited long as in the days before the conquest of Canaan. In 2 Peter 3, it says, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, but the day of vengeance is coming. So again, look at uh, Isaiah 63 for a moment. Isaiah 63, and um, he says in Isaiah 63, verse 4, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And again, he, this, this is the, that future context. It, it, he is looking way out there ahead to the end of time. And um, the day of vengeance is offset by the year of my redeemed. You know, the redeemed are his. My redeemed. And the redeemed are delivered. They are untouched by the day of vengeance. And the Lord sees them, um, you know, he sees them uh, almost together in verse four, uh, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart and the year of my redeemed is come. You're there in Isaiah, look at chapter 13. The redeemed are his and they are delivered from that day of judgment. But he said, but the day of vengeance is in mine heart. Look at Isaiah 13, verse 9. Isaiah 13, verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Back up to verse 6. Verse 6. The day of vengeance is in mine heart. Howl ye, for the day, the day of the Lord is at hand. And this is what he's talking about, about the day of vengeance is in mine heart. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause their light to shine. So as you're reading this, if you have any doubt about the time period, you know, and that, you know, you've always got people that are questioning and reinterpreting all this. It's just very obvious, the timeline. Very obvious. Okay. Verse 11. And I will punish the world. The day of vengeance is in my heart. I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Boy, don't you, can't you imagine how sick the Lord must be, you know, all these decades and, 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 and maybe centuries of these college professors 
who have mocked the Lord and stolen his faith from these young people and have robbed them and, and even Bible college professors who have robbed people of their faith in the Bible. And, and the Lord said, I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day, the day of his fierce anger. Now, in this passage, you see something that shows up in verse 17 that is interesting, and you see this often in the prophets. And so, you know, bear this in mind as you, as you read the prophets, verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children, and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldee's excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So what you have mixed in with this passage is you have, it's, it's a double prophecy. You, you see, again, you see an immediate judgment mixed into the passage. And, and really, that should never be a problem. And I just want to share that with you tonight because... We, we live in an age where people, they're, they're really wreaking havoc on prophecy. And, uh, and you know, that's the, the root of a lot of difficulty doctrinally. And what they do is they'll say, see there, well, that was just for the Medes. Um, no, it was for both. And they, they really have a hard time uh, accepting that. But it's, it's, it's very clear he's talking about both. There is an immediate judgment that's taking place. There is a long term, the day of the Lord. He says in the passage, I will punish the world. So it's actually actually very clear. The day. Uh, go to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. The day of vengeance is in my heart. Now, I say all this. I remember years ago preaching through the book of Revelation in, in Saskatchewan. Um, and um, we were talking about some of the judgments that were going to come. And, uh, you know, I remember a, a young, we had a, a teenage girl and she was a really sweet girl. And, um, you know, it, it, you know, it really, it really bothered her um, that God was going to do this to people. And, um, but you, you have to stop and think for a minute and you have to think, what have they done to him? And for how long, pray tell? After all his blessings and all his goodness and all his kindness, and he's fed them all their life in spite of the fact that they've cussed him and hated him and spit on him. And they've rejected every messenger that he sent. And they rejected finally his son. And the Lord said, you know, he said, he said, I have loved them. And he says, I love them still. But he says, but the day of vengeance is in my heart. Malachi 4 verse 1. For behold, the day, the day, the day, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. They'll be the fuel for the fire. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall not leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you, the redeemed, that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Look at Psalm 58. Psalm 58. Psalm 58, verse 9. 
Psalm 58, verse 9. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with the whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. The day of vengeance is in mine heart. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judgeth in the earth. In the earth. Go to Zechariah 14. Malachi is the last book. And if you back up just a, just a page or two there, you'll hit um, Zechariah 14. And what you notice as you read through um, the Old Testament, you know, you see a lot of prophecies about, um, you know, the first coming of the Lord Jesus. You see prophecies of his second coming. You see prophecies about Israel. You see prophecies about the Gentiles. And you see a lot of prophecy about this day. Look at Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14, verse 1. Zechariah 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh the day, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight. The day of vengeance is in mine heart. And fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach into Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. You know, it is his day. I mean, he comes, and man, he is going to set things straight. He is going to fix things that have never been fixed. And he is finally going to reward them as they have rewarded him. And um, it is his day. But it's our day too. Because he says, he comes and all the saints with thee. It is an everlasting day. Read it on your own time, Isaiah chapter 60. It's interesting. He talks about how the sun shall no more go down. It is literally his day. Go back a few more pages to the left, and uh, you'll see Haggai and then Zephaniah. Zephaniah 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. I will also stretch up mine hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place and the name of the Kimarims with the priests, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm, and them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord nor inquired for him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, 
he hath bid his guests. Look at verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Go to Joel chapter 2. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel. Joel 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day, the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run." Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a people strong set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. He's describing this, this battle force that will be moving on that day. And uh, man, it sounds like uh, uh, a group that God is going to bring into this thing, and they're supernatural. Verse 9, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter His voice before His army, for His camp is very great, for He is strong that executeth His word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? Look at Joel chapter 3. We're almost done. Joel 3. Joel 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause the mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge. The day of vengeance is in my heart. For there will I sit to judge all the nations, all the heathen round about. And notice verse 13, put ye in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe, come get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. 
The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. You know, um, it says the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Um, that day is in his heart. The day of vengeance is in his heart. Look at Isaiah 63 one more time. You know, this is a Wednesday night crowd, and, and you know, I, I, I really, you know, I feel really confident that, you know, everybody in this room knows the Lord. But, you know, this is, um, you know, I, th I think sometimes, um, you know, we, we can sort of um, lose sight of a lot of things. And, um, you know, we, we witness to people and we pray for people and we pray for our lost loved ones and all that sort of thing. Um, we go out and we pass out tracts. And I think sometimes, you know, we do that because that's what we're supposed to do. And that's correct. That is what we're supposed to do. Um, but, you know, part of what we're doing is, um, man, today is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Um, today, if they will hear his heart, if they will hear his voice, May they not harden their heart. Because you know, uh, you know where we're at. We we believe we're we're really close to the rapture. We we believe that. I mean, could be tomorrow, could be tonight, could be, could be 30 years away. We don't know exactly. Um, and you know, the, the Lord is really aware of what time it is. You know, we get busy and that's normal and that's life, and um, and that's okay. Um, but Man, I spend a lot of time in my day timer. I spend a lot of time in my calendar. We got two or three calendars, you know, around the house, and Mitzi keeps Mitzi keeps track of certain things, and I keep track of certain things, and and we're double checking calendars, and and I mean that is just a continuous thing. Um, a lot of you guys do that. You got things on your calendar. You know. Isaiah 63 opens up and says, Who is this that cometh from Eden with dyed garments of Basra? And he says, I that speak in righteousness. And then he says, in the midst of all this darkness in these two verses, three verses, in the midst, he says, he says who, who am I, Isaiah? He said, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Who is this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength? He's done a lot of traveling. You know, um, he traveled across the universe. The Bible says his steps are in the sea. It says that in several places. He travels across time. He traveled to Bethlehem. He traveled to Calvary. From Calvary, he traveled to the heart of the earth. From the heart of the earth, he went to heaven and then back. And then he went to empty that tomb. And then he traveled to heaven again. And he travels to every real church where two or three are gathered. There am I in the midst of them. And if you're saved, you know what he did? He traveled to your heart and he took up residence. In your heart. He travels with his people. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And yet, even though he's with you, the Bible says, even at this moment, he appears in the presence of God for us. Who is this? You know, um, if you're redeemed, you know what he is to you? He is mighty to save. He's mighty to save. And, um, and the day of vengeance is in his heart and the year of his redeemed 
It says in this pastor, the year of his redeemed has come. And somehow they, they tie together. You know, that, that day comes, uh, that trumpet's going to sound. And, and you know what that's going to be? That's going to be the year of years. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee sounded off with the trumpet. It was the year of release. It was a year. Um, that day is near. I, The day of vengeance is in his heart, and, and what caught my what caught my eye with all that is, is I constantly find myself, I find myself frustrated. I um, I can't wait to see the Lord's cause prevail. I can't wait. We sing that song, "Look ye saints, the sight is glorious." See the man of sorrows now from the fight returned victorious. Every knee to him shall bow. And you know what? Uh, the Lord's, I, I, think, I think that's in your heart too. He says the day of vengeance. You know, it, it won't be long. We, we watch social media. You know, I, we all social media. We, we look at social media. I'm done with this. And you know what? You know what? I, I find myself. I've just. I've gotten to the place where um, I'm not real hopeful um, with governmental things. I should have been there a long time ago, right? But but it, I'm a little slow. It took me a while to get there. I, my hope is in the Lord. I believe the Lord can overturn anything. I believe He can change anything. Uh, I believe He can upset and overturn their plans just to spite them. And I'm praying He does. Um, and I wouldn't put it past him just to mess him up for a while. Um, just in his great goodness. I think he did that last week. Um, but you know, I, I find myself in the last few years, my, I find my hopes go, oh, something's good's going to happen. No, it's not. Something good's going to happen. No, it's not. Now, praise the Lord. We got through COVID. Praise the Lord. That was wonderful. They said we'd never get through that. We did, by the grace of God. I, I trust this thought will not be a dark one for you. It wasn't dark for me at all. The day of vengeance is in my heart. And one day, it says, we will wash our feet in the blood of the wicked. I don't know about you. I'm looking forward to that day. God said, God's telling you me, just hang in there a little longer. He said, that day is on my calendar, and it's not far away. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your book. Thank you for your truth. Thank you, Lord, that you, you hold everything in your hands. Lord, you have your hand on the throttle. You control the reins of the universe. The Lord reigneth. God, we thank you, Lord. God, help us that our hope would be in Thee. And God, as we see the wicked and we see them rejoice, we see them vaunt themselves against Thee, we see them rise up against Thee. Lord, we rejoice that the day of vengeance is in Thine heart. And God, we're looking forward to riding those horses with You. But Lord, in the meantime, You're still traveling the earth and You are mighty to save. Now, God, in view of the judgment that is coming, may we do our best, Lord, before you. Would you keep us stirred up, Lord, that we might win people to take to heaven with us. God, stir us as we pray. Lord, may our prayers for our loved ones in this room. And Lord, I'm excited. I, I'm thrilled that I keep hearing some of these same names. And Lord, I'm, I am looking forward to hearing what you're doing in their lives. Now, Lord, may we, may we pray with fervency, and intensity, Lord, because you have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And Lord, you have saved us from the wrath to come, and God, you still save. And we pray, O oh God, our loved ones, that we're trying to reach for thee, and we're praying, and the tracks that have went out, and the, the prayers, and the prayers, and the prayers that have went up. God, please hear us. Lord, 
The long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Now, Lord, you have been so long suffering yet. We pray, O God, let us get our loved ones gathered in. God, we beseech thee, and Lord, you, you, you died for them. You love them more than we do. And we thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, may our trust be in you, and may we find this motivating, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.